well, well, well. Welcome back or welcome if you haven't already watched any of my previous tutorials. I am going to be doing a run through on this look that I did on the amazing Lucy Baddeley for Sondre a few weeks ago and you'll see that I wasn't able to actually talk through the makeup as I was applying it so that's why I am doing a voiceover and I will be talking through all the steps that I've completed as you watch me do it so stay tuned watch the end of this clip and yeah how bloody hot is she Okay, so the first thing is I used the Pay Camellia Rose Gentle Hydrating Face Cleanser. I'm really loving these products at the moment because they are so gentle on the skin and really, really hydrating and nourishing. It was a really hot and humid day, so I wanted to hydrate the skin and moisturize it, but I didn't want to use any heavy products. So I used the cream cleanser first because then I can wipe it off and I'm not going to have any heavy residue left. And I'm going to use a serum later because anything after that, it was just, it was too much, too much for the skin. Serum goes a lot deeper into the skin as well. So as you'll see in a second, I'm using the Pay Serum, the Natural Hydrating Face Serum. It's really, really beautiful and light and really great to prep skin for makeup. Then I'm going to use the Clinique Moisture Surge Eye Gel. Again, a really lightweight eye gel. It absorbs in the skin so quickly and you're not going to have that heaviness sitting on the skin because it's all about that lightness on a humid day. You don't want anything that's not going to absorb in the skin that's just going to sit on top, which is always great for dew a dewy look if you want that, but we're getting that natural dew just from the humidity in Australia. Okay, pay the facial spray. Really stunning smell. Like It just smells like a day spa. Oh, yep, yeah, she has a little little go herself. Now I'm moving on to priming and I'm a big believer in seeing instant results from your primer, whether it's illuminating or pore filling. And this is my, probably my favorite at the moment. It's a Clarins Instant Smooth Perfecting Touch. It's a pore minimizer, instantly mattifies and just fills in those pores. I would say that and a Tatcha, the Tatcha Silk Canvas is another one of my favorites, but those two are just so great and instantly like a putty filler for the face basically i'm enhancing the glow using the tom ford illuminating primer it is a much more expensive primer the reason why i do love this one is because it does fill in the pores as well if you're say a dry skin type but you have large pores this is a great product to use because it's not just going to enhance pores it's going to fill it in but then give your skin that glow i do put this over the top of the um instant smooth uh clarence product because i don't feel like it moves it or anything um so that way i can still get that radiant glow all over but it's such a nice product it's just bloody exy okay so i'm just continuing to buff the primer in Take my sweet ass time there. Okay, so next thing I'm going in with the Fenty Glass Slipper Gloss. Truth be told, it's just because I couldn't be, I couldn't find my Laneige Sleeping Lip Mask, so I just grabbed this one. It is still super hydrating, and I always like to apply a lip gloss at the start so that it marinates on the skin. And by the end of the application, I can do a matte lip, and the lips are still hydrated. Oh, this is something that I've been loving at the moment. I'm, I'm desperate to get my hands on some more of this. It's a Mark, Mark Jacobs Dew Drops in Tantalize. And I use this to basically, instead of using a foundation, I just use these. And it warms up the skin because a lot of us are a lot lighter in the face than what we are on the rest of our body. So I wanted 
her to really she's got such stunning skin there was no need to cover it up with foundation so I just use these dew drops to warm up the face rather than applying foundation and even for me um, on my days where I just don't want to wear much makeup this is what I've been doing I just put the dew drops on the outside perimeter of my face so I get that overall warmth and then I'll apply concealer in the center of the face in that feature focus but Wait till you see just oh, how stunning this fan, um, these dew drops are. They just give the skin such a beautiful natural glow. For this makeup, I didn't even use like illuminating drops or highlighters at all in this makeup um, until later on in the day when we wanted to really step it up because I felt like the skin, it already had enough glow just from using this as a foundation or you know, warming up the skin. It, it's not even a foundation. It's just illuminating a bronzing illuminator. This was a jewelry campaign. It's for Sandre, beautiful jewelry, very gold, um, that real yellow gold. So we want, the look is always going to be super, super bronzy. So that's why I wanted the decolletage to also have that bronzy illuminator there. I am going in with the Dior Perfecting Touch Concealer. I love this concealer at the moment. Oh, it's just... Uh, NARS Creamy Concealer was always my my go-to, but this has now become um, my number one concealer, as is the Dior um, Face and Body Foundation. It's my favorite, but this concealer is really, really nice and light, um, but also gives such great coverage, um, really forgiving. It is, I'm using the shade 2W just um, underneath the eye because I like to use it to lighten up that area because it just is going to pop any of that sunken in bit around the eyes forward and act as a bit of a highlight as well i love this little brush it's actually from beauty blender i don't know the name of it i'm sorry but it is a concealer brush and it's got that little ball on the end so you can use it to massage in your serums or just your eye creams whatever um but yeah it's a great great brush I'm going in with the Ray Morris brush as well, just to buff out those edges around, just to make sure you can't see where the concealer starts and stops. I don't know the name of this brush, but it's the best thing ever. I'm also using that concealer on the eyes, just to create an eye base as well, just to make sure that eyeshadow sticks. Then I'm gonna go in with the brows before I do anything, and I'm using the Makeup Weapons Brow Balm. And for natural brows, bushy brows I like to really get that brow balm in place first it's a st basically a soap and if you don't have access to brow balms at the moment um, a cheap option and a really great option is a pears soap just from your Coles or Woolies or um, they look it looks like the the soap that an old man would use 80 year old man that's non-moisturizing does nothing for your skin other than cleans the skin so really um, and you just wet your brush and you can get that those brows to stay in place so i just like to groom the brows to assess where i need to fill it in she's got really gorgeous brows but because we're doing video and photo work and flash i really need to step up the color a little bit so i'm using the viseart brow palette and i'm just going to use the light the two lighter shades and kind of go between the two so i have some it's going to look more natural if you have two different kind of colors. So I might go a little bit darker on the outside, but still kind of buff in that lighter colors on the edges of the brow. So I hope you enjoyed that little segue into some music there. I thought it just needed a little spruce up, if you know what I mean. 
But I'm taking my time with these brows because I really want to make sure that the brows look as natural as possible. And as you can see, I go, I take my brow powder in and then I go back over the top with my brow balm just to, again, make sure those hairs look separated, but the color is still coming through. So just, oh, I'm filling in another little gap that I've missed. And I just am going to continue that on the other side. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing is going in with the Copper Charge Eyeliner by Charlotte Tilbury, and I'm using the metal uh, metallic side. Goodness me. There's two sides, so the metallic and then there's the matte side. So the metallic side I'm just using to basically create a smudgy kind of line look around the outside of the eye on the top and the bottom. And then... Later on, I'm going to use the matte shade just on the outer corner for a little bit more depth and definition. But I just feel like this is such, it's basically another way to prime the eyes and just getting those coppery kind of tones once I apply my eyeshadow later to really pop even more. But to be honest, a lot of the times I'm just building and seeing whether I need to add more or whether I can finish at that point, which I feel like it could have just stopped at that point, but I wanted just a little bit more for this shoot look. If you've watched my previous tutorials, you would have seen that I use this little Define brush by Merton to blend most of my eyeshadow work. I just love it, and I feel like if you don't have it, um, you should really get it because it just helps, especially for the under eye area where you want that smokiness, but you want um, it to be controlled. So it's a great little brush uh, for really, yeah, getting in there and doing that petite work, but still smoky. Taking this eye pencil also into the inner corner of the eye because I want this to be yeah quite smoky but I love the color of this pencil because it's still so soft so it's just going to get that pop to really shine through when I add a lighter color in that area later now this is where I'm using the matte end which is a lot more more of like a ready brown kind of shade so it's just giving that extra depth to the outer corner of the eye So for the eyes, I'm using the Copper Charge Charlotte Tilbury palette and the colors go from left to right, from bottom to top, it goes in uh, the prime, enhance, pop, then smoke. And the shade that I'm using is the pop color, the which is the bottom, what is that? Bottom left. And I'm getting that shimmer to really pop on the eyes. I find the pop shade really works best when you use your fingers. You get that full on um, brightness that you want from that shade. And that's how all of the Charlotte Tilbury palettes work is that the top left is the prime one then it goes across to the enhance then it goes to the pop shade down the bottom and then it goes to the smoke shade or uh, the oh gee look at me i can't even left right who knows you know what i mean
Okay, so now I'm going in with the prime shade for the inner corner of the eyes just to get that highlight popping. Again, using that little Merton brush. I think I have about five of these now just in my kit because I just use them all the time. And here I'm using the Dior Universal Glow Palette. I'm using the bronze shade because I'm going to get that through the crease of the eye. And it is more of a luminous colour. And I kind of wanted this eye look to be all shimmery and just to go with it to, rather than usually I'll use a matte shade through the crease of the eye. But I was just really vibing the whole eye just to be nice and shimmery and have almost like a wet look. The music I chose right now is uh, like cinematic, so I felt like, you know, we're getting to the end of this makeup, so I thought we needed a little bit more of an amp up with the tunes, but um, it's building to something. We're building to the end of this makeup, and I'm now using that same bronzy color from the Dior Glow Palette uh, underneath the eyes because I'm smoking it right up as well because I want... I love that smokiness being under the eye. I just feel like it makes the eyes look so sultry. Now I'm going in with the Hourglass Caution Mascara, which is my number one mascara. I also love the Lancome. Oh, I don't know the mascara name, but it's really good. There's a Lancome one. Um, I also love the Benefit Bad Girl Mascara. That's also a beautiful mascara. Um, but there's also heaps of cheap ones, like the Maybelline ones are also really great if you're more on a budget at the moment. I just could not help myself. I am sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Now I'm going in with some contour. I'm using Fenty Stick. The Match Stick. Oh, look, I'm sorry. I just had to. You're watching a Tennille J Makeup Artist tutorial. I have to be a little bit silly in here, but I'm using the Fenty Matchstick in Truffle and I'm just going to enhance that bronzy kind of cheek finish um, because I did have, I've got the bronzing illuminator underneath, but I just wanted to step up that contour because it's all about that bronzy look with the Sandre shoot. Okay, so we're getting into um, into this contour, aren't we? And I'm using um, this magnificent brush from Hourglass, which I don't know the name. It's a very long name, but you can't miss it on the site. It's the best contouring brush ever, I feel. Because um, it's like a big, like a spongy kind of brush. I'm also using my foundation brush just to buff around the edges to make sure that you know, it's all seamless. I hate seeing where it starts and stops. So to me, I feel like when it comes to your base, when it comes to your eyes, just keep blending. Just when you think you're finished, just blend a little bit more just to make sure there's no little lines that we're just not seeing. For the lips, I wanted to make sure that this all kind of is monochromatic, which means that it's the same kind of tones in the eyes, the lips and the cheeks. So I'm using the MAC Oak Lip Liner because it's more of a brown, bronzy kind of shade because I want this all to kind of just tie in 
to one kind of look really effortless and chic. So I'm overdrawing the lips just slightly, especially Lucy's top lip. I've filled it in just a little bit more than the bottom. Just kind of want to really make her have a, like she's got gorgeous lips anyway, but just really bring that pout forward. And then for lipsticks, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Nude Kate, which is like a caramelly nude. So it's not it's not pink at all. I would say it's more on the brown side and it's a cooler tone rather than really, yeah, pinky. Okay, so the final step is using a facial spritz just to set everything in place and add extra hydration because it was so, so hot. I'm not using powders because for the shoot, I needed the makeup to look fresh all day. So keeping it as creams, it means it's easier for me to maintain and I can touch up and the makeup will look fresh all day because I'm there. So I'm using the Kevin Murphy Texture Spray after I've done the hair. I used a straightener just to kind of add some little crimpy bits into the hair to make it look really undone. Um, and then, yeah, this Texture Spray just adds just that beautiful volume that we all love. A final touch up with some concealer just to make sure that there's no creases or just to fill in, it was so hot, so I'm just touching up where we've gotten a little bit sweaty. And she is ready to shoot. What do you think? Let me know.